Hello and welcome everyone. It's a great honor here to present at the BOL Symposium. My name is Saki Baziz. I'm a PhD candidate at the University of Art under the guidance of Professor Gangnagel. I'm a trained architect and the project that we want to show you today is called Minimal Mineral. It's an investigation of a digital process chain for function integrated and resource saving mineral structure elements by the means of additive manufacturing. I will try to keep the introduction short. As we all know, we are facing a lot of diverse challenges in the construction industry, mainly caused by the usage of reinforced concrete as the main means to construct our buildings. And this has a big impact on the CO2 emissions, mainly caused by the materials that we use as cement and concrete or steel for the reinforcement. And the whole idea here is to use new technologies and new kind of methods to construct to foster a more sustainable design in the future as we go along. So as a first little exercise, we created a generative model of a critical office space design and wanted to really allocate the most material usage in the individual components that make up the overall structure. And as we can show here, the slab geometry actually encompasses the most embodied carbon or the most material usage for this raw structure. So what is shown here is that basically we zoomed into one unit and the unit shows how usually the construction method of reinforcement is carried out. So first of all, you install formwork, which actually takes most of the costs and efforts to install. And then you put in the reinforcement, as you can see here. And after the reinforcement is done, you do actually the on-site concreting. The most effort goes into the construction and assembly of formwork, which actually also has to be taken away, so disassembled. So basically what we saw is that a lot of effort goes into the formwork and the on-site concreting. And the idea was to create a system that actually tackles exactly those parameters aiming to um, save some or reduce the material usage. But of course, we also have the interior fit out, basically giving us a nice a microclimate interior one, which we have on MAP systems and um, acoustic ceilings. So the idea here was to not only use additive manufacturing to reduce the material in the raw construction, but also to embed um, microclimate effects such as thermal heat exchange and uh, sound absorption into the raw structure and hereby minimizing the overall package of the slab design. And this with the means of additive manufacturing, basically. So we looked at a large variety of construction systems that you can currently find. Um, and what we understood is basically you have two different types of uh, construction systems, one-way and two-way spanned ceilings. Um, so we did a comparison and found that we have two candidates that are actually pretty good to investigate further. One is cap ceiling, which Amy will be showing in the next presentation. Here we create a focus on a two-way joist system, so a slab looking, uh, spanning in two directions. And um, looking at the structure, the basic idea, so this is the cap ceiling that uh, Emil will be looking or presenting in a second, so just a kind of a preview for that. The two-way joist system, what it does, it actually uses plastic formwork bodies, which are industrially um, fabricated, uh, enabling to just create kind of a small covering. So you put your reinforcement, concreting, and then you basically have this covering system. What we wanted to investigate is, could we use additive manufacturing to create more exotic looking shapes, basically, just to be more liberal when we try to design spaces. Also deriving at concepts that uh, Pierluigi Navi uh, proposed looking at the maximum bending moments to understand more defined how actually the forces travel inside a slab, creating a more exotic looking pattern of the rib structure, as you can see here. So we did this in a streamlined way, digital process, and created um, formwork bodies, which are not easy to uh, fabricate using normal means, basically plastic formwork bodies. So we said, can't we use uh, additive manufacturing to just liberate ourselves and create any shape we want? And we created kind of a digital process chain, allowing us to design, evaluate, validate, and then actually create those um, formwork bodies in a very streamlined fashion. And you can see we are quite free and um, it can be actually created very fast, um, those formwork bodies. So the one thing that is very important is that these formwork bodies are not lost formwork. They stay in the structure. Basically, we create zero waste in the, the use of resources. And because they are going to stay in the, in the structure, we could also um, augment them with more intelligent uh, qualities, basically tackling a microclimate, interior microclimate, bringing in heat exchange and acoustic absorption qualities only by form finding and integrating them into those pieces that we actually 3D print. So with the sound, what we did is we looked at Helmholtz Resonatoren, basically a bottle, and the way that the bottleneck and the cavity 
as volumes uh, are configured, they absorb different frequency bands, basically. And we calculated that in the FAM, uh, FAM um, analysis program and validated them with physical prototypes to just see if our measurements match actually what we then see in the physical prototypes and they did so that was a big first um, thing that we found out so we utilized this mechanism integrated those uh, absorption qualities into the formwork making them more intelligent if you will and then basically just went on to create a first demonstrator that you can also see in the room 27 in the mmd lab with the, like this big demonstrator that you can see here and uh, 36 um, formwork bodies we printed in one day so it's actually quite fast and we also assembled them in a, like 30 minutes just to see if three people actually can assemble those formwork boards because it has to be also practical in a way. If it's not practical, it doesn't really make sense to use them. Um, so this was a demonstrator. This is already a bit of old work that we did. So now I want to switch back to the presentation. If I ever, yeah, this guy, um, uh, Windows user. So this is going to be embarrassing. Yeah, great. Good. No. Not good, it's black. Could you? Oh, no. Okay, sorry. So, um, after we did this first uh, concept, we then were approached by a client who was actually building a headquarters in France. This uh, image is terrible, but basically, the whole structure is going to be, a uh, whole complex is going to be additive manufactured. And he said, Can't you use your uh, design scheme to basically test them on these two tower like structures? Uh, implementing, of course, all of your strategies that you uh, were proposing. And that's basically what we're doing right now. So we're doing a proposal and we looked at, um, so this tower-like structure has two floors, mezzanine and roof design. What we did is a benchmark test to look at how much raw materials would go into the slab if it's just a solid concrete slab structure and also allocating the depth of the slab and then uh, rationalized it with the buffer slab structure. Interestingly, the height of the slab increases when we have a buffer slab structure due to the structural um, analysis that we did. Still, we even though the slab is even thicker, we still uh, reduce the material and embodied carbon by 40 to 50 percent using this scheme, which is kind of interesting. I'm just going to fast forward a bit now to the design scheme. So what you do in a structural analysis, you have an overall system, you uh, implement support structures. Here we have on the corners, the four supporting points. And based on that, you create this very um, unique kind of pattern, which is basically showing you the maximum uh, bending moments in the structure, basically how the forces would love to travel through the slab. And based on that, we can then uh, streamline the pattern to a more rationalized way for fabrication purposes, because the other one is a bit too, too much. And um, what we did here is to introduce two types of uh, formwork bodies. One is, of course, our acoustically implemented um, absorbers. And the other one would be light wells because the space is enclosed, has no windows, would be nice to have some sort of light in the space. And this is going to run through how we imagine this could be um, built. So you do first uh, analysis structurally, looking at the grating of the system. And then you basically have your walls that are 3D printed. You introduce a formwork on which then the uh, additive manufactured formwork will be placed. So first you have your uh, light wells, you have your acoustic bodies, and then one of the challenge here was, um, as you can see from research to actually a practical building, there are great challenges that we need to face. One here is actually the planning of the reinforcement because it's not as streamlined as a normal rationalized uh, grid. So we had to um, do a bit of a yeah, geometric trick where we have basically um, support areas that host two different types of reinforcement cages, if you will, with different heights. And this might look a bit um, confusing. And why are you doing this? The whole thing why we're doing this is that uh, reinforcement has steel rods that connect the whole slab as a, a spatial a steel frame, if you will. And we needed to make sure that there are no collisions from one direction to the other direction. And in this way, we kind of utilize that, that the steel rods can go through and they have no collisions, enabling us to actually create a scheme for the reinforcement planning so once that is done, um, those are the critical points. And then, of course, you just have your on-site concreting. You just pour concrete until you have your finish. And again, so this is a very first design sketch. I'm pretty sure this will change, as always, in architectural designs. But still interesting to see, um, coming from a demonstrator that we just did in the research, 
to apply it or use it on a real building and what challenges you actually must face once you have real problems. Uh, it's quite interesting to see that. Um, I'm going to be finished in like one minute. So the design of the mezzanine floor, same principle. We just have a staircase that needs to lead up to that space, obviously. Same design mechanism. We only have this time five supports, giving us, again, a very unique looking pattern that we rationalized. And then we create this um, aesthetic. Right now, this is still very simplified. The way that they will look, as you will see also in the demonstrator in the room 27, are a bit more detailed and articulated. And that's basically the presentation, the current stage that we are in. I just wanted to basically show that additive manufacturing or new technologies can actually, uh, if you use them correctly, do it, its part to a more sustainable future in construction or can lead to it. So thank you very much.